In this video we'll take a look at the Heathkit IM17 Utility Solid State Voltmeter. The IM17 was a multimeter offered by Heathkit from 1967 to 1977 at prices that range from 1995 to 3295. It can measure AC and DC voltages and resistance and display them on a large four and a half inch analog meter. It's housed in a plastic case with a lid that contained the test leads and was battery operated. It's a solid state design using transistors that provides the same high input impedance as earlier vacuum tube voltmeters. There were two versions of the case. This is the early black boxy shaped one. They later switched to a more streamlined case, first black and then later brown. I don't own an example of the later case, but it looks similar to this Weller soldering iron case. It appears that the same case was also used on some Heathkit automotive tune-up meters as well. The IM17 was offered only as a kit that the user would assemble. The catalog listings indicated that it could be assembled in three to five hours and no other instruments were needed to calibrate it. The IM17 was discontinued in late 1977, but then came back in 1979 as the IM5217, which was similar in appearance but had some circuit and feature changes. The IM17 can measure AC and DC voltage and resistance. DC voltage ranges are 1, 10, 100, and 1000 volts DC full scale. AC voltage ranges are 1.2, 10, 100, and 1000 volts AC. And resistance ranges are times 1, times 100, times 10K, and times 1 meg. The AC ranges respond to peak voltage and are calibrated for RMS based on a sine wave. It uses a 4.5 inch 200 microamp analog meter movement. The accuracy if calibrated against an accurate source is plus or minus 3% for DC volts and plus or minus 5% for AC volts. AC measurements are accurate from 10 Hz to 1 MHz. It has a high input impedance to minimize the effect of loading on the circuit under test. The input impedance is 11 megohms for DC and 1 megohm for AC. An accessory input jack is provided that can be used with optional accessory probes. The catalog stated that it was not recommended for use in RF fields. I imagine that because it was in a plastic case, it could give erroneous readings if used around a radio transmitter like that used for amateur radio. More expensive meters housed in metal cases would not have this issue. The unit has three permanently attached test leads which fit into the case. The gray lead is for DC volts, the red lead for AC volts and ohms, and the black lead is the common. To the right of the leads is a quarter inch jack for optional accessories, a high voltage probe for measuring high voltages like those on television picture tubes, and an RF probe for measuring radio frequency signals. These were sold separately by Heathkit. On off is the power switch. Current drain is low on the voltage ranges when the test leads are not connected, so it's safe to leave turned on during extended periods of use. The resistance ranges do drain the battery, so it should not be left on ohms for long periods of time. The off position also shorts the meter movement, which damps it and provides some protection against physical shocks. The DC plus DC minus switch reverses polarity, so you can flip the switch rather than reversing the meter leads to measure a negative voltage. The range switch selects the function, one of four DC voltage ranges, four AC voltage ranges, or four resistance ranges. The zero knob is adjusted so the meter reads zero with no input. This needs to be set from time to time due to temperature changes or as battery voltage varies. The ohms control is adjusted so the meter reads full scale on the resistance ranges when the leads are open. This also needs adjustment periodically as the battery voltage changes. Voltage is read off the meter, applying the relevant multiplier for the selected range. For example, the 0 to 10 on the meter represents 0 to 1000 volts on the 1000 range and 0 to 1 on the 1 volt range. Note that the two lowest AC ranges, 1.2 and 10, are marked in red on the range switch to indicate that you need to read from the red scales on the meter. The different scales are needed due to the rectifier circuit in the meter not being linear at low voltages. 
One safety note, the metal chassis is connected to the common terminal, so any voltage on the common lead is present there. This can be a shock hazard, for example, if you measure the AC line voltage and the common test lead gets connected to the live rather than the neutral wire. As a simple demonstration, let's measure the voltage of a couple of batteries and a resistor. So first, uh, a couple of batteries, we turn the unit on and set it to the 10 volt range. We're going to measure first a 1.5 volt battery. So we use the common lead and the DC lead. So on the 10 volt range here, the 1.5 volt battery is reading just a little over 1.5 volts. Now a 9 volt battery. So again, we're on the 10 volt range. This is reading just about 8 volts. Now let's measure the resistance of this resistor that's about 5.6K or is marked 5.6K. we we'll switch to our suitable resistance range, let's say R times 10K. Make sure that open circuit is reading infinity. And we use the red AC ohms lead. Make sure that when we're shorted that we're getting a reading close to zero. And measuring the resistor, we're seeing a reading of about uh, 0.6 on the scale, so at the R times 10K range. That's somewhere between 5 and 6K, so that looks about right. Let's take a look inside. The chassis pops out of the case by pressing a couple of tabs on the sides of the case and lifting it out. Most circuitry is on a single printed circuit board, while other parts are mounted on the L-shaped metal front panel. The PCB is made from a phenolic material and a single-sided and silk screen. Two batteries are required, one 1.5 volt C cell and a less common 8.4 volt mercury cell. This was in a form factor a little shorter than an AA cell. The mercury battery had the advantage of a long life and constant output voltage. Type 1611M, these batteries were commonly used in early transistor radios, but are no longer available in part due to the use of mercury. You could find 8.4 volt alkaline batteries in the same size, but they're quite expensive, typically over $20. A simpler solution is to use a standard 9 volt battery. As I'll mention later, I wired in a 9 volt battery clip in this unit for that purpose. The unit will work fine with a 9 volt battery, although the battery life may not be as long as the original. The DC probe has a 1 mega ohm resistor inside it, which you can see if the probe is opened. The test lead is shielded, and it was important that the resistor was at the end of the test probe and not inside the meter. The circuit uses 5 transistors, 1 FET and 4 bipolar, and 1 diode. Precision resistors divide the input voltage based on the range. This drives a FET configured as a source follower amplifier, which provides high input impedance. This then drives a balanced bridge circuit with one leg of the bridge driving the meter. It uses two bipolar transistors in a balanced emitter follower circuit. Two back-to-back -back transistors are used in an unusual manner with the bases left unconnected. They act like Zener diodes to clamp the input and protect the meter from excessive input voltage. The AC ranges use a silicon diode to rectify the input and a capacitor to charge to the peak voltage. The ohms ranges use a C battery as a source to drive current through the resistance under test and the range switch divider resistors. Note that the balance pot on the PCB is a dual one which can be hard to find a replacement for. The unit is a little hard to work on once assembled. You'll want to disconnect the printed circuit board from the front panel to do any significant work or parts changes. I bought this unit from a local seller on eBay. It came with no manual but was listed as working but needed calibration. As this is the older case style, it would have been made prior to August 1970 and could have been as early as 1967. It's in good shape, used, but not very scratched considering it's over 50 years old, so it was probably not used very heavily. I found several copies of the manual and schematic online. The manual has the usual Heathkit detailed assembly instructions. It also dedicates quite a few pages to information on the operation and use of the meter and meters in general. The manual is written assuming less knowledge of electronics by the reader than some of the other kits such as ham radio equipment. 
The manual calls it a volt ohm meter since it can only measure voltage and resistance or ohms. The requirement to use different test leads for DC and AC and ohms can be a point of confusion. I'm surprised that Heathkit didn't mark the leads or color code the ranges somehow to make it obvious which leads to use. I made a couple of labels with a label maker and attached them on the chassis next to the red and gray leads. Since the original mercury battery is no longer available, I wired in a battery clip so it can use a standard 9 volt battery. I performed calibration as per the manual. You adjust the bias control on the printed circuit board so the meter reads zero at the center of the zero control position. Calibration of the DC ranges is done by using a 1.5 volt battery and adjusting the DC cal potentiometer for a reading of 1.5 volts on the 10 volt range. This is not particularly accurate since the battery may not be exactly 1.5 volts and the reading appears near the low end of the meter scale. What I did instead was to connect a variable DC supply and adjust it for an output of 10 volts DC as read on an accurate digital multimeter. I then adjusted the IM18 DC cal pot for a full scale reading on the 10 volt range. AC calibration is done by using the AC line on the 1000 volt range and adjusted for a reading of 120. This is also not very accurate as the line voltage may not be exactly 120 volts and it's low on the 1000 volt scale. I calibrated it using an AC power supply adjusted to 10 volts on a digital multimeter. The resistant ranges are not calibrated. You just verify that the ohms adjust control works correctly. I tested against a number of resistance values using a resistance substitution box and the readings were reasonably accurate. A search of sources like eBay show that this model is very common and I expect that Heathkit sold a lot of them. The low cost and basic features would have made it an attractive meter for the average person that might want to use it for checking electrical appliances, toys, or in the car. The rugged case meant that you could leave it in a basement shelf or in the car trunk and use it whenever needed. As a kit, it would be fun to build and the detailed manual would allow someone with little or no electronics experience to assemble it. The lack of current ranges was not a big drawback for most users and this reduced the cost of the unit and avoided the safety issues associated with measuring current with a meter when not properly connected to a circuit. Between the IM17 and the later similar IM5217, essentially the same meter was sold from 1967 through 1987, a pretty good 20 year run. Can you think of any electronic products today that remain on the market almost unchanged for 20 years?